And still to come on the program, we see the traveling exhibition. I know you saw a bit of that last week, which took place in Abuja, but this time it's taking place at the Omenke Gallery in Lagos. It's a way to let people really understand what's happening in Borno, North East Nigeria, a state which has been tainted by crisis. So after the Abuja success story, the exhibition moves to the commercial city of Lagos. Bits of Borno, bruised, not broken, a photo exhibition by Fatih Abubakar shows another side of Meiduguri a city known for its violence, but the goal here is different. Because I was unhappy with, you know, coverage of Borno State, I felt like the um, focus had been on the conflict only, and I wanted people to see that there's everyday life, even in the midst of the conflict. I wanted to document everyday people and tell their stories, essentially giving voice to the voiceless. As the Nigerian military makes giant strides to nip the crisis in the bud, it's time to pick the pieces and using a medium that speaks louder than words, this photo artist shows the strength of a people who have a desire to live life to its fullest after seeing so much blood and bullets. We want to create that emotional connection between people in other parts of the country to the realities that ordinary Nigerians, ordinary citizens are experiencing in the Northeast. So this uh, photo exhibition basically is... Uh, are, are organized in such a way that people can come in a very relaxed and cool atmosphere to really see that the power of the human spirit is happening live and direct in Meduguri, where every story you hear in the media is bomb blast, 20 people dead, 30 people dead, so so number injured. You hear that uh, children are malnourished, they are dying every day. There are also the resilient spirit, the resilient stories that life is actually coming back to normal. The government is trying. The people themselves in the communities and villages that were once under Boko Haram, that are liberated now, they are ready to bounce back to life. So the spirit, the human spirit is indefeatable. And so, as expected, these pictures show how the people are picking up the pieces of what's left of their lives. The joy on their faces is infectious. <laughs> Capturing the images is one thing, but interacting with the people is one experience this photographer would always treasure. It made her take a deeper approach to telling this picture story. When I started, I just walk out every day and I go looking for people that are open to talking about their stories. In documentary, I think it's very important for you to have consent for the subject to trust you. I usually engage them in conversation. I ask them if they're willing to be in it. I explain to them where it's going. So it's very important for me, for the person to feel safe, for him to consent to it. So, and it's never a one of the, a lot of the communities that I photograph, I usually go back to them because because you, you have to, you know, have a community trust you, have to, they have to be familiar with you before they let you in. And also because the page has been successful, we're getting donations now from people who want to help. So I usually have to go back to the community and give the specific person whatever has come out of it. The pictures show that violence is a stranger to the people, but they had to learn how to survive with this foe. What I want people to see is the resilience of our people, the fact that despite the conflict, there's life going on, they have survived and are very keen to move on. And we don't get stories like that every day. We just see what happens you know, when there's a bomb blast. We don't ask questions about what has happened to the people that are left behind after the bomb blast. So I always look for untold stories about our place. And I was really worried about how we are perceived, so I had to take control of the narrative and show people that we're strong individuals and we've survived the conflict and we just want to rebuild our lives. Recently, this is what comes to mind when Borno is mentioned. The first thought is the Boko Haram crisis. 
These images capture the fun and caring nature of the people. They take the viewer up close and personal to see pictures never celebrated. What is happening in Borno is, as we know it, people struggling to move on and people wanting to move on, but it's very difficult for everyone. So we would like to see their resilience and how they're moving on, how they're coping and how they're resettling. So those are the stories I look for and those are the stories that I portray. Affluence, it is always good to get feedback and from your feedback I can tell that there's something that you as an audience want to see and moving forward we incorporate that into it. Generally, in a documentary, we look for where it is, you know, for narratives that are different from what we usually see. What we see on Instagram, for example, in Borno weddings, you see a lot of affluence. Those are stories that are already known. So for, for it to be untold, it has to be different from what you encounter when you talk about Borno. Most of the subjects are smiling, despite the danger that pervades the air daily. It has not in any way dampened their spirits. Unfortunately, when you say Borno State, people just think of a war zone. We just want them to know that there are people living in that war zone. It, it, it is actually stories that I feel are positive because whatever is bad about Borno, you can find it on Google, but you cannot find anything about Borno that is beautiful, a child going to school, people in the market, businesses that are opening despite you know attacks. So I think it's important for people to see positivity as opposed to the constant narrative that we are a no-go area. Her subjects range from children in school to the women going about their business and the cattle rearing activities, just to mention a few of them that are captured with so much color. This traveling exhibition is still moving as the organizers feel the need to change the perception and show that the dreams and expectations of these people are not stillborn. I hope you enjoyed that photography exhibition. You know what they say, pictures speak louder than words.